Welcome, Ben Mama. The first Commodore computer designed specifically as an affordable home micro, the VIC-20 became the very first computer to sell 1 million units worldwide, and very much set the company up to release the world dominating Commodore 64. Clever marketing that included adverts featuring William Shatner and the infamous price war with Textus Instruments very much helped put the VIC on the map, and also cemented Jack Trammell's position as one of the computer industry's biggest players. With big sales comes plenty of attention from third parties, and the VIC-20 received tremendous support from all the key software houses in North America and Western Europe, receiving a host of excellent arcade conversions, as well as many original games too. And as always in these amazing exclusives videos, it's the latter of these that we're going to be focusing on here. But I actually found this to be a lot more troublesome than I first expected. Despite its huge success and passionate following, information on VIC-20 games online really isn't that good, especially when compared to other computers of its era. There was no definitive list of exclusives anywhere, and the only one I did find was not only minuscule and far from complete, but also very wrong, with games listed that also appeared on other machines. So this video actually took an awful lot of research as I identified possible candidates and then cross-referenced them through multiple websites to check their eligibility. But in the end I settled on a list of 10 games that I was pretty happy with, which contains a mix of titles that will probably be familiar to VIC-20 fans as well as several more obscure titles that you might not know about. But as always, I hope this opens up the platform to those who haven't experienced it at all. But with that intro out of the way, it's time for the main event, as I proudly present 10 Amazing Commodore VIC-20 Exclusives. Why buy just a video game from Atari or in television? Invest in the wonder computer of the 1980s for under $300, the Commodore VIC-20. Unlike games, it has a real computer keyboard. With the Commodore VIC-20, the whole family can learn computing at home. It plays great games, too. Under $300, the wonder computer of the 1980s, the Commodore VIC-20. Coming soon, Commodore brings you Gorf, the wonder arcade game, and Omega Race in home versions, Commodore. Written by Andrew Chalice, who went on to create the popular one-man army variant into the Eagle's Nest, Alien Attack is an excellent arcade-style shoot-em-up that borrows elements from several other games and blends them together perfectly. In the game, you control a small ship at the bottom of the screen that can move across a full horizontal axis, much like Galaxian or Space Invaders. You have to try and make it through three different stages, the alien attack itself, mothership battle, and the journey home. So level one sees you facing a series of fixed attack waves, the aliens here don't move at all, so all you need to do is shoot them out the way to progress. Then you move on to the mothership battle, where you must try to blast through the hull to kill the crew inside. Once the mothership is defeated, you get to head home, but soon discover that an asteroid field stands in your way, so you need to negotiate this as your final challenge. In this part, you can't shoot. You can only dodge the incoming space rocks to stay alive. You get three lives to do all of this, and once you complete all three waves, you get to do the same all over again, only harder. The graphics and sound are both pretty basic in this one, but that doesn't really matter too much for a game like this, and the gameplay more than holds up. It's nice to find a space shooter on the Vic that tries to do something a little bit different.
This quirky game comes courtesy of Jeff Minter, a true legend of the British video game industry, who is still producing classic games to this day. Interestingly, he claims to be a bit embarrassed by this game, saying it was too simple and crude compared to his later efforts, so he actually withdrew it from sale after just a few months. But I think he's being a little bit hard on himself here. Sure, Ratman isn't one of his finest moments, and it doesn't exactly set the world alight, but it's still a pretty fun game that has all the humour you expect from a Llama Soft production. I suppose you could describe this as a new take on the classic fairground game Whack-A-Mole, as you control the titular Ratman trying to rid a store of ravenous rodents. Armed with only a hammer, you must splat the rats as they fall from the ceiling. If they make it to the ground, they'll head for the big hole in the floor, and you really need to make sure they don't get down there. If they do, they turn into much more vicious devil mice who are armed with spears. Then they will move around under the floorboards trying to stab you from below. This isn't the only hazard though, as there's also arrows that get fired at you from above too. Wow, these rats are really smart, and these will also have to be avoided. Getting hit loses you a life, and once all three are gone, you get to watch a very amusing Monty Python inspired death sequence. Ratman is fun, if a bit slow. Now right here we have something really interesting, because Terminal Software's log run is actually a clone of a clone. Yep, you heard that right, and imagine you're now wondering how that's possible. Well, you see, back in 1982, obscure British arcade manufacturer Century Electronics, who were most famous for the game Hunchback, created a title called Logger, that paired more than a passing resemblance to Nintendo's Donkey Kong. But this game had a forest theme, with you trying to reach the nest of a rare bird. So, as you may have now worked out, Log Run is a clone of Logger, which itself was a clone of Donkey Kong. Got it? Terminal have changed the level designs here a bit, and you are now a lumberjack trying to retrieve your axe, but it's certainly pretty similar, as you make your way up the screen jumping over the rolling logs and climbing ladders. As well as the logs, on later levels a new hazard is introduced, a nasty little rat that chases you along the platforms. So yeah, that's it really, you just keep doing the same thing over and over, only harder. Graphics are pretty simple here, although there is some quite nice sound, but it plays nice and fast and keeps you trying for that high score. There are certainly plenty of better Commodore VIC-20 platformers out there, but Log Run is a fun diversion for a while. The plot to this rather obscure VIC-20 game is rather ludicrous. I would detail it here, but it would end up taking up my whole review, and so I tried to condense it somewhat. But it's still well worth reading online. Basically, it tells the story of King Rupert and his evil cousin Baron von Fritz, 
who is trying to take the mountain kingdom from him by sealing a pact with the devil that will see the king sacrificed by throwing him from a plane into a fire pit. Nice. Thankfully, the eagle of the north got wind of this plan and has flown in to help. You control the giant bird as you try to stop the Baron completing his mission. The screen looks reminiscent of the classic Williams arcade game Joust, with the fire pit at the bottom and all the floating platforms, but it doesn't really play anything like it. When the Baron flies onto the screen, he will drop both King Rupert and a load of firebombs from the plane. The latter will form the fire pit at the bottom and must be avoided at all costs. Rupert will fall onto a platform where he can be rescued and flown back to his cloud castle in the top left. You basically do this over and over as it gets harder and harder. But it presents quite the challenge as you only get one life. I really like the colourful graphics here and the original concept, though the audio is a bit rubbish. Birds of Prey is certainly worth a look if you're looking for something a little bit different to play on your Vic 20. Written by the so-called computer whiz kid Eugene Jarvis, who was one of the founders of Imagine and star of the infamous Commercial Breaks documentary that looked into the huge success of the company just as everything started to go wrong, Wacky Waiters is one of his most highly regarded games in those early years, and a fun but frustrating fixed screen platformer. In the game you play as a waiter in a large hotel tasked with delivering the room service orders. On the left hand side of the screen is the bar, on the right hand side the rooms, and in the middle a series of platforms and lifts that must be negotiated to get from one to the other. You start by waiting for a customer to appear, when they do you must make your way across the screen, take their order, and then go back to the bar to get their drink. They are all different colours, and the one you have to collect also flashes to help you identify it. Once the order is taken, a potential tip appears in the top left hand corner, which then starts to rapidly decrease. This acts like a timer, so you need to complete the order before this reaches zero. If you mess up an order, run out of time, or fall down a lift shaft, you lose a life, of which you have three. Both the graphics and sound are quite nice here, and the game is certainly a lot more challenging than it first looks, as you have to be pixel perfect getting into the lifts. Patience is certainly a virtue here. When I first saw this on a list of Vic20 exclusives, I naturally assumed it was a Jeff Minter game with that title, so I was really shocked to find out it wasn't. But it very well could be, because it's a crazy but very cool game made up of two very distinct parts that keep you coming back for more. In the first part, you're protecting your base from the mutant herbs of the title, but the way you do this is very unique. You have two laser walls, one on a horizontal axis and one on the vertical. As the many mutants emerge from their nest, you have to push them off the screen and stop them from attacking your base. But once a purple mutant appears, you have to push it into one of the nests to trigger the next stage. 
an alarm like sound effect plays when it appears to help alert you. In the second part you have to make your way to the bottom of an ant's nest and lay explosives next to the eggs laid by the queen and then make it back to the top and hit the button to detonate. You have to watch out for the falling rocks as you make your way down the shaft. Although blowing up a desk decreases the amount of enemies attacking, it also damages your laser, making it less effective, so the game actually becomes harder. The graphics are pretty good here and the sound effects are excellent, but it's a superbly original and engaging gameplay in Mutant Herd that keeps you coming back for more. The original Ultima was a huge hit for Sierra Online and Lord British when it was released for the Atari 8-bit and Apple II back in 1981, so it only seemed natural that they would want to bring it to all the other popular home computers of the era too. Unfortunately, when it came to the VIC-20, there was the huge issue of limited memory, as well as the inability to display high resolution graphics, so they came up with this game instead, Ultima Escape from Mount Drash which is a spin-off designed exclusively with the Commodore hardware in mind. Gone is the top-down RPG gameplay we all know and love, and in its place is an adventure game with a first-person 3D viewpoint where you're trying to escape from the enemy fortress on Mount Drash. This stronghold is made up of 15 enemy field floors that each has an exit with your view limited to a small window in the top left. As you move around the game, a mini-map in the top right updates your movements and shows you the positions of enemies and the exit too. When you encounter an enemy, the bottom part of the screen, which is otherwise used for pretty useless info like your rank and direction, displays a 2D battle scene where you have to beat your foe to progress. Although this only has a very loose tie into Ultima, it's still an impressive game for the Vic with great graphics and multi-channel music. It's a shame real copies of the game are so rare and hard to find. Another VIC-20 game from the programming genius that is Jeff Minter, Abductor follows one of his more familiar themes, that of an arcade style space shooter, and one with elements taken from one of his favourite games, Defender. In fact, this is probably best described as a cross between the Williams coin up classic and another one from Namco in the form of Gallagher. You control a ship on a horizontal axis at the bottom of the screen, and below you are a row of helpless humans. Aliens swoop down from the top of the screen in formation and will try to snatch the humans and make their escape. So yes, you guessed it, you have to shoot the aliens out of the sky before they can do that. If you shoot an enemy during abduction, you'll need to catch the falling human to return him. If you don't, then he dies. If an alien completes an abduction, a skull falls from the top of the screen that kills you if you don't avoid it. If you do manage to clear an attack wave, your ship is upgraded to a bigger one with more firepower. If you lose all of your three lives, or if all the humans are abducted, it's game over. The graphics here are pretty good, with loads of enemies flying around on the screen, and the sound effects are excellent. But it's the fast action gameplay that's the real winner here, 
and Abductor has all the one more go appeal of Minter's other more famous shooters like Grid Runner and Tempest 2000. just looked at a second Jeff Minter game and now we have a look at another title from Imagine's Eugene Evans. This one is a bit of a hark back to the arcade games of the late 70s in many ways, because it's a purely high score based game played against a time limit of sorts. In the game you control a spaceman who is constantly falling towards the surface of a moon, but thankfully the gravity isn't that strong so your descent is quite slow. The biggest problem here isn't the gravity though, it's the inhabitants of this moon who don't particularly want to see you there. So as you fall you need to blast them away, but the way you do this is quite unique. You see, in the middle is the main display window where you see everything from a first person perspective, but to the left and underneath this display field are two scanners, one showing your vertical position and the other your horizontal, as well as the location of all of the aliens. When you shoot, your laser appears where the X and Y axis meet. But as you are constantly falling, the only way you can control the vertical position is by using your jetpack. The problem is that using this burns fuel, as does using your laser, although to a lesser extent. Once this is all depleted, it's game over. The graphics are okay here, but I wasn't keen on the colours, and the sound effects are pretty decent. Overall, Frantic is a highly original game that will appeal to all the arcade junkies out there. <laughs> Before researching this video, Chariot Race was the only VIC-20 exclusive that I knew about, because I was introduced to its delights at a retro gaming event many years ago. In fact, that was probably my first interaction with the computer full stop, as I never knew anyone who owned one growing up. It's gained a bit of a cult following amongst VIC-20 owners after being featured in Retro Gamer magazine and represents the only racing game on this list, as well as being the only one that can be played by two people at once. As a concept, it's also fairly original, having been inspired by the famous chariot racing scene from the classic movie Ben-Hur. You jump into the seat of your chariot and must try to win the race and eliminate the other racers in the process. You do this by smashing them into the walls. The problem with this is that it slows you down, and if you're too slow, the crowd will start pelting you with fireballs. But you also need to watch out for your rivals, because if you smash into the back of them, or are smashed against the wall yourself, it's game over. In two player mode you are trying to eliminate the other player first, and having originally played the game this way, I can confirm that it is tremendous fun. The graphics are colourful and set the scene really well, the sound effects do the job perfectly and the controls are spot on. Chariot Race is a real must have game for the VIC-20. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Senti! Ora che ce l'hai, guarda che ci fai! Tanti giochi divertenti, nuovi giochi entusiasmanti, tante cose intelligenti che interessano tutti quanti. Vic 20, visto che ci fai? And that rounds on my look at 10 amazing Commodore VIC-20 exclusives. Can you think of any other one-off titles that only ever came out for this popular 8-bit computer? Or do you think some of these games were unworthy of inclusion? We always love to hear the thoughts of you and my audience, so please get typing in that comment section. Before I go though, I must thank all of my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following patrons and YouTube backers in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Grady Haynes, Mitchell Valentino, Seth A. Robinson, Carl Olson, Dos Gaming Man, Sonic Mania 999, Paul Daniel, Andrew McKay, Retro Resolution, Matt Standish, James Taylor, Troll Dawn the Burninator, Minz, 8 Pit Guy, Luke MC, Ben P. Stein, Tabby Kitsune, and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. We can get access to host richer content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.